Hey, what's going on, everybody? So tonight we are going to be talking about, is my mic working? Yes, it is. So tonight we're going to be talking about Minecraft, magazines, and little tiny mini monitors. I had some thoughts about that. Party people, how you feeling? What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Papa Jug Podcast. We're in episode 28. We are two away from 30. Doesn't mean anything. It's just thought I'd let you know. Congratulations, I can count. I hope you're all doing fantastic. As I am recording, it is Friday night. It is 7.30 Pacific time, 10.30 Eastern time, and later than that in other places far, far away. I hope everybody is fantastic. Tonight we are going to be talking about four big things, one of which I just think is cool, and that is the new, or I should say new, it's not new, but it's upcoming Minecraft movie from Jason Momoa, and that kind of became the theme. I noticed that as I was building this agenda, and I was like, okay, we're going to put that on there, that's going to be pretty cool, I want to talk about that, you know, a couple days later, I was like, oh, let's talk about that, and then and then we had a thing that happened today, and, and all these things, and I was like, there's a lot of M's in this, we've got Momoa, Minecraft, movie, magazines, monitors. There's one topic I really couldn't find an M for, and and that's Google. Uh, so we're out of luck on that one. Uh, but everything else got an M and it works. So that's what we're doing. Uh, like I said, we are talking about Momoa's Minecraft movie, uh, a magazine, a mini monitor, and Google. So Let's jump right into it. Uh, oh, wait, no, no, no. First, I got to do a couple of updates for you. Um, first of all, uh, last night I announced the uh, giveaway for the month of February. That is going to be on the Twitch channel. You got to watch the Twitch streams for this. But if you play Star Citizen, you are going to be interested in this one. It is a Drake Cutter starter pack with LTI with wind chill paint. Yes, all of that is being given away at one time. Uh, I'm going to give that to some lucky winner, uh, but you have to be spending a lot of time in the Twitch channel because uh, you're going to need to earn the piñatas in the channel. That's how you're going to buy the tickets, and that's how you're going to get the the prizes. The prize. Well, I mean, it's it's like four. Pr- it's fine. It's it's good. All of that. Um, so that got announced. Uh, next week, I am doing my streams with viewers. So I'm going to be t- picking one or two viewers and going to be doing streams with them in Red Dead, Sea of Thieves, and Star Citizen. So that's going to be a good time. Sign-up sheets are going out into the Discord in an hour and a half or so, something like that. Um, I also wanted to thank everybody who has been supporting both the YouTube channel and the Twitch channel. Uh, if you have subbed or followed, whatever it is, on either platform, Uh, Thank you so much for doing so. I am on the path to partner for both. And I have now confirmed with Twitch that I am way past the halfway point of Twitch partner. And as of tonight, I am now way past the halfway point for uh, YouTube. So progress has been amazing. Thank you. If you haven't followed me yet on one or both of those, uh, please do. I would love to earn your follow. If you find the content entertaining, great. If you don't, don't follow. I get it. It's cool. It doesn't have to be for everybody, but I do hope it is a thing for people that like it. So we're going to do that. Um, Yeah. So like I said, uh, those are a couple of the updates. I feel like there's a third one, but it's not jumping to my brain anymore. Um, No, 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 no. Uh, I have a new Drake sound that I'm going to be unveiling next week. Uh, Blood Tide's going to hate it. Um... Oh, and then I'm working on a new loadout video and I am working on a new potential sleep video concept. Uh, so there's a lot of updates going on. Uh, we've, but you know, recently we've unlo- we've launched some, um, uh, some new emotes in the Twitch channel. We've launched some, um, new emotes in discord. Um, I got featured, not featured. That's, that's the wrong word. I got included in a, uh, very popular YouTube highlight video. So I thought that was pretty cool. I discovered that today and I'm going to be sharing that on Tuesday. I kind of put it on social media already, but it'll go on the Discord on Tuesday. And yeah, so PJ Party, we're having a good time there. Uh, If you're not a part of that yet, uh, drop a follow, join somewhere, sub somewhere, do whatever you do. You know, there's a thing. 
So anyways, let's jump into tonight's topics. The first topic we are going to talk about tonight is Sports Illustrated. This is the M for magazine, or this is the magazine for M. I don't know, whatever. Uh, Sports Illustrated. They are having a challenge. Sports Illustrated is, hold on, I'm touching. Oh, that's the problem. Hold on. I just, there is an issue where I can't see YouTube chat right now. So (laughs) give me a minute. There are people in chat and I can't see them. Um, no, d- s- no. D- oh my God. Google. I- oh, Google. Google needs a beating. Now, okay. See, Google is, is pissing me off and now Google say they're going to lay off more people. Hey, maybe you need to keep some. Just a thought. They'll say they're going to lay off more people. Hey, maybe you need to keep some. Just a thought. No. Okay. Now I just lost chat. Okay. Sorry guys. There will be no live chat tonight that I can read. You can chat amongst yourselves. I can't read it. I just, Oh, Google. Okay. <clears throat> so moving right along, um, sports illustrated, uh, it was announced that the entire staff has been laid off. That was pretty sad. I really hate doing these shows where we talk about layoffs, but it seems to happen a lot lately and sports illustrated. So, it's not as easy as it sounds. It's not as simple as it sounds. It's not like all of a sudden they were like, okay, let's fire everybody. There was a, there's a problem. Sports Illustrated got bought in 2019. So five years ago, Sports Illustrated got, I'm sorry, the publishing rights. So there's an owner and that owner sold the publishing rights to another company. Okay. The, the publishing company, which is called Arena Group, has not been good for the magazine. The union has struggled with them. The public has struggled. It it hasn't been a great thing. It's been okay, but not great. There have been some major, major problems. The publishing company has to pay the owner for the publishing rights. So there's a monthly payment. Like, hey, we appreciate the opportunity. We're going to pay you to publish Sports Illustrated, and then we make, you know, ad revenue and things like that. So they did that. And turns out not great because they missed a payment. So the publishing company called Arena Group, uh, Arena missed a payment. And so the owners took the publishing rights back. The problem is the owner doesn't have the ability to make the magazine. That's why they gave up the publishing rights. So they fired everybody. Yeah, that's rough. Um, Union's pretty pissed. The people that work there are unionized. And in most cases, you can't just carte blanche eliminate an entire unionized workforce. Um, there's there's state protocols, there's federal protocols, there's negotiate, there's contract pro. You know, I mean, there's so many steps involved in this, and everybody just got a layoff notice. They were like, "Yeah, the exact." You know, I'm gonna. Uh, I saw an article. I think it was CNN Business. Yep. Um, Blah, blah, blah. In a memo sent to staff that was viewed by CNN, the magazine's publisher said it is, quote, laying off staff that work on the SI brand. Now, the SI brand is more than just that one magazine. There's little offshoot magazines. There's websites. There's there's some stuff. There's some content there. Gone. They just, nope. We are laying off staff that work on the SI brand. Um, the owner, which is authentic brand group has owned the magazine and website since 2019. It's sold the publishing rights to arena, but the company missed a payment, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the owner said in a statement that sports illustrated will continue. So the owner has said, we will continue the magazine. They didn't say how they were going to do it. That's a problem. That that is a, a major issue for how are we going to continue this publication, which is a famous publication, 70 years ish. Sports Illustrated has been around for seven decades, used to be mostly about sports. Now it's mostly about a swimsuit issue, whatever. So 70 years of history, the owners have said, yes, that is not going to go away. Okay, but everybody just got fired. So plan B would be what? there's There's some confusion and curiosity about what the hell that means. Okay. Um, Quote. 
Uh, we are here to ensure that the brand of Sports Illustrated, which includes its editorial arm, continues to thrive as it has for the past nearly 70 years. There we go. Uh, we are committed to ensuring that the traditional ad-supported Sports Illustrated media pillar has best-in-class stewardship to preserve the complete integrity of the brand's legacy. Now, as I have said for pretty much every post-layoff statement, um, that's bullshit. That is absolute PR marketing speak because it is not true. Okay. So right here, we are committed to ensuring that the traditional ad supported sports illustrated media pillar has best in class stewardship. That was not the case with arena group. That absolutely no arena did not give it best in class diddly nothing. What? Oh, okay. Um, I'm sorry. I thought like one of my mods was like, dude, shit's broken. I'm like, yeah, I know. Uh, but that wasn't the case. So anyways, um, so it, they have clearly not been concerned with best in class stewardship because that's not what they've had. That's, that's just not what has been the case. And they knew it. They knew it. this is a financial deal. This isn't some sort of like, you know, journalistic news endeavor where they're like, we're going to maintain our integrity. no, you have a swimsuit issue. Like, let's not pretend that this is some high class publication. You know, this is a thing where you are selling physical activity. I think that's the most general spot I can make. This is you're selling physical activity and you're not above reproach. Is it a, is it a legacy brand that has a, a strong, um, place in sports media? Absolutely. But best in class stewardship to preserve the complete integrity of the brand. Come on, just stop. The PR department went apeshit on that one. Um, by the way, I didn't know this. I didn't know that this was who like the founder or not the founder, <laughs> the founder's dead. Um, I, I didn't know this was who owned it. It was one of the founders of five hour energy. I didn't know that. Sports Illustrated was founded or was owned by one of the guys who founded Five Hour Energy. Don't talk to me about brand integrity, please. You're a drug dealer. Legal drugs, of course, but a drug dealer. Let's, okay, move on. Um, oh, this was a good one. It's been a difficult few months for one of the most recognized names in sports journalism, and the entire future of the brand is uncertain. In December, the Aruna... Bleh, in December, the Arena Group fired Sports Illustrated CEO Ross Levinson after an embarrassing debacle in which Sports Illustrated was caught publishing stories with fake author names and fake profiles, uh, profile photos generated by artificial intelligence. Levinson was replaced, effective immediately, by the interim CEO Manoj uh, Bargava, who was the Five Energy Hour or Five Hour Energy founder. He owns a majority stake in the Arena Group. Let's stop with the brand integrity part. Just, just stop it. So that's, that's a weird moment in sports history. Uh, sports Illustrated, the entire staff has been canned, or at least most of them have. We, we haven't heard confirmation that it's everybody, but we know most of them have. Uh, so that's where Sports Illustrated is in terms of magazine world. Not a great place. And like I said, whether you read it or not, it still has a special sort of iconic, you know, placement within sports media, within media and within sports, even sep take those two categories and separate them. Sports Illustrated is still special in sports, still special in media and for sports media. They're great. You know, so all of that. Okay. Um, but another round of layoffs. And I thought it was interesting to hear, to hear that little part about, uh, the fact that they had to fire the CEO because they were publishing all these fake stories and everything was done by AI. We're going to get to that when we get to Google. So stay tuned. Let's go to our next topic. Uh, the next topic is boom, Google. Hi, Google. So uh, the guy on screen is the CEO of Google. It is Sundar Pichai. And um, he sent an internal email to everybody at Google, which I, I'm interested in like everybody at Google. Cause that's like a hundred thousand people. Um, that's a long email list. Like, like, do you have to push send the day before and it just goes out in batches? Like, I mean, this, if your Gmail ever doesn't work, it's probably because Google sent an all hands email. Just say it. So anyways, he sends this email 
I'm going to get to this. See, Google CEO warns staff more layoffs, more beyond the horizon. Now, this isn't huge news. Okay, we all, I think we've all seen and predicted that there are going to be more layoffs. It's not like they stop yesterday and it's like, okay, everybody that needs to get fired has been fired. No, there's more coming. The, the year 2024 is going to be weird, especially with a major presidential election coming around that is going to be pure chaos. So there's that. Um, the economy is going to be an interesting position. Okay, whatever. So. Google CEO Sundar Pichai warned his employees in an internal memo on Wednesday about the possibility of more, quote, role eliminations at the company in the coming months. Quote, we have ambitious goals and we'll be investing in our big priorities this year. First of all, that statement sucks. That is not what you tell the people that may be losing their jobs. And I'll explain why in a minute. Um, he wrote it. Blah, 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 blah. Quote, the reality is that to create the capacity for this investment, we have to make tough choices. If you haven't figured it out already, let me explain why that first sentence is so cruel, heartless, and short-sighted. I'm going to read it again. We have ambitious goals and we'll be investing in our big, oh my God, we have ambitious goals and we'll be investing in our big priorities this year. Okay. What you've just said is that people are not our big priority. Because what they're not doing, they're not firing AI machines. It's not like they're taking servers offline. They're firing people. You sent an email to people saying, we're going to invest in our priorities, quote, we have to make tough choices. Literally, we are replacing you with machines. That's what this is about. When you hear that Sports Illustrated had to fire a CEO because they were doing everything with AI, literally replaced their, their, editor, their editorials, their, they replaced writers and photographers with AI. That's why he got fired. You don't think Google is sitting there doing the exact same thing and has been doing it for years going, how do we replace people with AI? AI is cheaper. That's what they're doing. And he just said it. We have ambitious goals and we'll be investing in our big priorities this year, dot, dot, dot. The reality is that to create the capacity for this investment, we have to make tough choices. Translation, we have to fire humans so that we have enough money to buy machines. That's it. They just laid off hundreds of employees across different functions, including advertising, sales, engineering, hardware, and Google Assistant teams. The jobs were cut about, quote, removing layers to simplify execution and drive velocity in some areas. It would be fascinating if Google were to come out and say, we had too many managers. Bro, you've got like 80,000 employees or 100,000 employees. Yeah, you've got middle management. Like they're there. Let's not pretend that you're going to make middle management go away because you had to show up from somewhere, right? Question. Uh, in a rare move, the chief executive pulled the curtain back for his workers while signaling that more headcount reductions may come. Quote, many of these changes are already announced, though to be upfront, some teams will continue to make specific resource allocation decisions. Again, with the terrible verbiage. More specific resource allocation decisions throughout the year where needed and some roles may be impacted. Again, <laughs> you, you just referred to humans as resources that you're going to eliminate. But nowhere, nowhere in these statements does it say we're also going to be reducing or eliminating our reliance on technology so that we can bring in the valued people that make this company great. He didn't say that. He didn't talk about the value that the humans are bringing. No, no, no. The investment, the, the priorities will require some headcount reduction. Again, if you're an executive and you have the ability to hire and fire people, don't be this dickish. I do appreciate that he's being honest. I, I value the fact that he and, and whatever other executives are involved in this. I appreciate that they are telling people, 
hey, we're not done, you know, precarious situation, jobs are iffy, blah, blah, blah. The The flip side of that is that now you have basically a whole company of, of tens of thousands of people. You have this massive corporation. Everybody thinks they're without a job in six months because nobody knows. Could it be the people that are working on Google ads? Could it be the people that are working in YouTube? Could it be the, you know, like, could it be there? This statement is just a collection of could it be's. Is it me? Forget could it be's. This statement is, is eight, you know, 80 to a hundred thousand people going, is it me? That's rough. You know, so on the one hand you want, you want your management, you want corporate leadership to be upfront with you and say, look, this is how things are going. This is how the company is doing. This is what our priorities for the future are, blah, 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 blah. But he missed part of that. And all he got was the humans aren't the priority. So some of the humans are going to go away. Interestingly, I doubt any of them are in the C-suite. I'm betting all of the people that have chief something in front of their name will probably be fine. These are the same people who brought the company to the place where the humans are no longer prioritized and they have to make massive layoffs. Will they lose their jobs? No, they won't. Just saying. So, rough, rough scenario, Google, but this has been true and we talked about this last week. This has been true for all of big tech. Meta has too many people. Google has too many people. Twitch has too many people. Apple has too many people. Amazon has too many people. So many layoffs. And it's just, it's going to continue throughout 2024. I will bet you this is not a trend that ends before the end of the year. I hate to see that. You know. What I really hope to see, though, the people that do lose their jobs, I would love to see some of them band together and create the next competitors create the thing that says we learned a lot. We're not, we're not bitter. We're not angry, but we, maybe that you are, I don't know. We learned a lot and we're going to create the better mousetrap. We're going to do the thing to create the next set of opportunities. Maybe it's not about dethroning Google or dethroning Amazon, but maybe it is a thing that says we've, we've learned that there is a, an opening. There is a niche that needs to be filled and we have the ability to do it. So we're going to do that. That way the people who do get laid off, or at least some of them, will have a new place to go. That would be pretty cool. I would like that. I think that's a good thing. Oh, let's find our mouse. Look, it's another M word. I need to find my mouse. There it is. Let's go on to our next topic. It is the Minecraft movie. So as I said, this is what, when I, when I put this in the agenda, I was like, yeah, this is the M episode. So this is Momoa's Minecraft movie. Okay. The reason I wanted to talk about this was I think you've all probably heard the movie is being made. It, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's be, being made by Jason Momoa because he loves video games. Um, another person who really loves them and it, like, he's got a passion for this project, which is cool. Um, I just found out that, uh, if you guys ever like watched wrestling, I just found out that Kane is apparently a diehard video gamer. I don't remember that. I don't remember hearing that, but yeah, the Kane is, you know, the big bear machine. That guy loves video games. He world famous athlete, mayor of a town in Tennessee, big video game fan. I was like, all right. I, I, the funny thing is like, I try to picture like somebody like him or, or the Undertaker. I don't know if the Undertaker plays video games, probably not, but like somebody like him or, or Andre the giant or something, this guy, these guys' hands are gigantic. How does, how do they hold a controller? Like they can't be Xboxing this PC. Sure. They could PC it all day. Keyboard is great. They could boom, 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 boom. You know, keyboards are bigger. A little tiny control. Like I'm, I'm trying to picture him playing like an NES, you know, like, the dude's hand could crush the the, the 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 little controller and but whatever he's playing it. So yeah, he loves that. Anyways, what are we talking about? We're talking about Minecraft, an M thing. Kane does not start with M, so I'm not going to talk about Kane anymore. Um, so a movie based on Minecraft, a popular game about stacking squares. Not entirely true, but close enough. 
in 2014, director Pete Sollett was attached to the project along with Frozen 2 writer Alison Schroeder, but the two left the film in 2022. Okay, bye-bye. We, we got to make an opening, okay? At another point in production, fan favorites Sean Levy and Rob McElhenney were on board, but that also didn't pan out. Had to go away. So... It was announced last year that Jared Hess is set to direct, and it seems like the movie is finally shaping up. Even though we're over a year out, here's everything you need to know about the upcoming Minecraft film. Plot, it's going to change. Who cares? We really don't need to know that. It's about the game. Life will go on. Two years ago, Jason Momoa was announced to star in the film. Uh, Jack Black is also going to star. He was recently cast, by the way. Jack Black was announced, I want to say, a week ago? Maybe a little a little more? Whatever. Jack Black is going to be in it. Jack Black is Steve. That's pretty cool. I, th- I think that could be fun casting. So Jack Black is going to be Steve. Um, Danielle Brooks will be Dawn. Emma Myers. Uh, oh, yeah. So Emma Myers. So these are some of the other cast members. Emma Myers. Jennifer Coolidge. She got announced a couple of days ago. Kate McKinnon. That's going to be funny and Jermaine Clement have all been added to the cast. We don't know what any of them are doing yet, but we do know that they are part of the cast officially now. So could be interesting. Um, The synopsis of of the movie that we got from Warner Brothers way back in the beginning, again, who knows if this is going to be true. Based on the globally popular video game, the story follows a teenage girl and her unlikely group of adventurers who, after the malevolent Ender Dragon sets out on a path of destruction, must save their beautiful, blocky overworld. That doesn't tell us anything. I mean, it tells us a little bit of something. It looks like it's going to focus on Alex, but, you know, whatever. Um, The Minecraft film is slated to hit theaters April 4th of 2025. Okay, so we've got 15 months. All right, not not crazy. Um, almost no production has occurred yet. They're casting. They're you know they're writing. They're they're prop. They're prepping. They're doing all their stuff. Um, but again, you know we're finally seeing this cast take shape, and I think that's going to be the interesting thing for now. Is that you know we've got these are major players now. This is a big thing coming out of Warner Brothers. What I'm hoping gets avoided, because I think this would be. A, a a very big, um, not only sort of a, a swipe at the gaming community, but I think it would show a lot of weakness on the part of major Hollywood studios because this is a Warner Brothers production. If they pull the plug on this, it's no secret in Hollywood that taking video games into the movie world has been a challenge. It's not the easiest thing for these studios to do. Why? There's a thousand theories but they haven't had great success with it. A um, couple of, you know, there's, there's been some recent ones. Uh, the, the new Mortal Kombat was, was a success. Okay. The Mario movie was a success, but there have been others that have been crash and burn failures. I think that this would show weakness on the part of Warner brothers and possibly the, the Hollywood industry, the movie industry at large is if they get deeper into this after making a cast like this with, you know, Jason Momoa and Jack Black and Kate McKinnon and Jennifer Coolidge. And, you know, they've got all these people. If they're like, yeah, even with that star power, we decided we're not going to make any money on this. So we're pulling the plug. It's like, why? This is one of the most beloved franchises of the last 15 years. And you can't make a movie out of it. Like the story opportunities are huge. You could do anything with these characters. That's the whole point of the game. The whole point of the game is that you can build what you want. And these Hollywood studios may not have the creative ability to understand that. Like, you can write any story. Just make these the characters. It's not like there's a ton of lore you you have to adhere to. Just make the game. Build stuff. It's cool. I mean, Free Guy was like, cool, we're, this is all about video games. We we can write whatever we want because we're taking characters from everything. Do that with Minecraft. I'm not saying that's going to happen. I, I want to be very clear. I'm not saying that Warner Brothers is pulling the plug. I think all the signs right now are very good. Warner Brothers seems committed to it. They're bringing on big cast members. They've got Momoa and, you know, producing it, all of this stuff. Great. I just don't want it to get pulled because I think we need to see more crossover. We need to see more game and movie come together. You know, 
Um, the Tomb Raiders, th- those were those were good ones. You know, Tomb Raider did did well, um, but it had you know strong cast. Angelina Jolie was at the head of that when it was really successful. Uh, Resident Evil was really successful, but there have been others not so much. And you know, I, I don't think Street Fighter was great. <laughs> you know, Street Fighter was rough. Um, some of the Mortal Kombat's were rough. First one was good. First one was good. A little campy, but good. Uh, the recent one with uh, Scorpion and Sub Zero that was good, uh, but there have been some terrible ones. So, anyways, that is where we are with the world of uh, Momoa's Minecraft movie. Uh, this is the bedrock of our M series. Uh, so we're really excited about that one, and I hope it continues. Let's move on to our final topic of the night, which is the the last announcement at Samsung Unpacked. Samsung had their convention. It was a lot of fun. They announced all their stuff, including the new S24 line, uh, which, by the way, I want to thank uh, Aristavo in the in the uh, PJ Party Discord. Aristavo posted a link to that. I hadn't seen the news yet, and he posted news about the new S24 line from Samsung. So um, thank you for that. Um, smart tech is n- never going to go away. Okay. Smart tech is going to be here for a while, but the ring technology has been fascinating to watch because it's new. You've got to get a whole lot of technology into a very tiny thing. So I called in the title, I called it a mini monitor. That's what it is. Um, the industry leader right now for the wearable ring tech, literally ring. Like I'm, I'm not talking about whatever ring you guys use on at nighttime. Uh, I'm talking about the ring that goes on your finger, um, making that smart. How do we use that to get bio data? And right now, Aura Ring is basically Aura, O-U-R-A. Aura Ring is sort of the industry leader. They've done a really good job at combining the tech with attractive design. So they've kind of, what I you know might refer to as Apple did. Um, they took interesting tech and they made it look good on people. Good, that's great. Um. Samsung is is wading into this because Samsung is is very much embracing AI. We're back to the AI topic again. They have embraced AI. Um, they are they're putting it in. In fact, that was Aristavo's point when he shared the article was um, Google, not Google, um, uh, Galaxy AI is going to be a major like bedrock part of the new S twenty four line from Samsung. And now the big announcement at the end of uh, Samsung Unpacked was the Samsung ring. It is a smart device. It is intended to gather a ton of biological data about you. It's just a biometric data, biometric data about you. The interesting thing is that they made no announcement about what it really is. They just showed a really cool picture, which we do have a screenshot uh, that's on, on, uh, on the display right now. Got a cool picture of it. It looks interesting because it could be if, I mean, if we're seeing this right, it could be clear. I don't think it's clear. I think we're looking at a very reflective glass. I don't know something. It, it looks more reflective than it does clear, but um, kind of cool. Maybe translucent. I don't know. Something like that. Uh, but it is a fascinating looking device. And they are trying to make a major push into the smart wearables market again. They are, they've already got some. It's not like it's new to them, but they they want to create the ring device because that is where a lot of the technology is going. How do we make something more convenient to wear? How do we make something more stylish to wear? I I don't blame them for wanting to do this. This is very early in the tech though. When you're telling me, and, and maybe this is because of my um, expectations or activity level as a guy, I don't know if this is going to be true for women. I don't know if this is going to be true for kids. It might even be worse for kids. But a device on on a on a part of my body that is going to take a lot of physical contact, you know, and you know, obviously a construction worker is going to take something like this off. If you're wearing this, it's going to get destroyed. Um, but for me, like I I work in an office, I'm still going to hit desks. I'm going to hit car doors. I'm going to be touching chairs. I'm going to be touching writing instruments. I'm going to be touching phones. I'm going to be t- like, there's a whole lot of things that's going to come into contact with these rings. They've got to be pretty industrious and still look good. You know, nobody wants to attach ugly devices to themselves anymore. You know, so there's things like that. But I wanted to read because it did get announced by um somebody at, where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? 
No, not that. Where's the doctor? Sorry, there was a quote. From, there we go. The Galaxy Ring announcement was made by Dr. Matthew Wiggins, the clinical research science, a clinical research scientist at Samsung Research. After a segment demonstrating a new Samsung health experience powered by Galaxy AI, same thing that will be in the phones. The ominous announcement was short and sweet, followed by closing statements and the end of the Samsung Unpack 2024 event. So at this point, we can only make guesses based on the health features presented during the keynote, because again, this has to integrate with your other stuff. So when you have a Samsung phone, the, the ring that you get is going, that data is going to be viewable and assumable, you know, downloadable into your phone. Makes sense. You're going to need a device to read it on. What I would love to see is a real wrist band, not a watch a real wrist band. And the the funny thing is the way I keep comparing it is like Wonder Woman's bracelets, you know, those armbands, you know, she's got those wrist bracelets. I'd love to see something kind of of that size that just shows me a ton of data. Stop making me hold a phone, you know, just put it on my wrist, make it a cool looking thing. And let me read something small, you know, bigger than the tiny little watch faces. Those are, I hate those. God, I hate those. Those are so dumb. And I've got good health. Like everybody's like, well, Jug, that's because you're old. No, it's not. I've got great eye vision. Thank you very much. My vision is 2010. I can read the watch. I just don't like the watch. I digress. According to Dr. Wiggins, the Samsung health experience will include the ability to monitor for potential sleep apnea symptoms by tracking sleep patterns, blood oxygen changes, and maintaining heart rate alerts during sleep. Okay, see, this is the kind of data that's going to be great to have. But remember, I've made this warning before. The more data we have, the more accountable we are. There will come a time where your doctor wants to download this data. Your doctor's not going to ask you in 10 years, how have you been sleeping? Your doctor's going to download it from your Galaxy wearable device. Doctor's going to be like, cool, let's do a download. Wow. I see. Okay. So you're really not sleeping very well lately. This is good to know. So let's talk about maybe, you know, is there a sleep apnea diagnosis? Are we having, I I don't know, ulcerative colitis, whatever. You know, the doctor is not going to rely on your impression or the lies that you tell about your health. Take that to the next level. Now that your doctor has that information, your health insurance company is definitely going to want that information. And if you don't give it to them, it is highly likely that they're going to raise your rates. They're going to say, if you give us your, you know, it's kind of like a, a you know, um, a car insurance companies. If you're a good driver, we're going to lower your rates. Well, the health insurance company is going to have a similar proposition. The health insurance company is going to say, if you give us your data on a weekly, monthly, yearly, whatever basis, you know, you give us your data, we will lower your rates because we can proactively deal with things. We can see when high blood pressure may become a problem. We can see that you're eating shitty and you're going to have bad cholesterol. We can see that your sleep is not doing what it's supposed to be doing because you're not sleeping right. We can see that you've got uh, back spasms, you know, and and we, you know, we've detected the signals. So we know that we need to start adjusting uh, food or water intakes or sleeping or, or desk posture or, you know, heavy labor or whatever the hell it is. That's where this is going. And as scary as that is for a lot of people, I think it's great. I'm excited about those opportunities. They're a long way down the road because the tech has to get built and everybody's got to get integrated and your health insurance has got to talk to your doctor system and the doctor system has got to talk to your system and da-da-da. And then it's got to converse with Apple and it's got, you know, and Apple's going to sell it for a bazillion dollars, a, 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 a kilobyte, whatever. It's cool because it's going to help us live better. And I truly mean better. I don't mean longer. I don't care if our lives get longer. Right now, our problem is the quality of life. That's our big social issue, you know, especially in the West, um, certainly in in third world impoverished countries, that's a whole other bag of, of problems because you've got to figure out not only economic status, you know, basic daily, like, do you have access to food? Like, health at that point is sort of a, let's get you food and water and then we can get health. In most of the Western world, that isn't a huge concern for most people. You know, there is some occasional food insecurity, but for the most part, food and water are available. So now it's a matter of what are we doing now that we have that problem solved ish. So, um, according to a patent filed by Samsung back in February of last year, the Galaxy Ring is, quote, 
intended to cover the categories of wearable smart devices in the nature of a smart ring for tracking, measuring, monitoring, and uploading health, fitness, and sleep-related information. Okay, fairly generic patent. I mean, it doesn't say a whole lot. Uh, the new he- Samsung Health Experience will offer... We- The new Samsung Health Experience will also offer medication reminders with helpful insights about potential interactions with foods or other medications you take. So this could be a huge benefit to those who suffer chronic illness, um, the elderly, if if they're on a lot of different medications. You're not relying on just a, a pharmacist to... I mean, I hate to say it, you're not relying on your pharmacist to care enough that all of the prescriptions you're getting, you know, I, I know senior citizens with 10 plus prescription. I know people that aren't senior citizens with 10 plus prescriptions. Your pharmacist isn't going to be looking at all of these going, you know, Jimmy, I don't think that's going to work. Or, uh, Maria, you know, this might interact with that thing I gave you three months ago. You know, let, let's see how it goes. They're busy. They're selling they're, quite plainly. They're pushing drugs. Okay. It, it's like everybody else we've talked about in this episode. They're just selling drugs. So, their job is to follow the doctor's instructions and they're going to get that to you. But maybe if you've loaded them all up into your smart device and you have your cool little wrist, you know, wearable uh, Wonder Woman armband that Jug has uh, told them all to invent, then maybe you can look at and it's going to prompt you and just be like, hey, you've got a new prescription. It's available for pickup or we can have it delivered. However, please be advised, this may create a uh, interaction with your daily yogurt breakfast. You know, maybe your new prescription isn't great with dairy. But if you're if you're loading your food, you know, your daily food, like, hey, yeah, I typically have yogurt for breakfast with, I, I don't know, it, 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 grapes and cherries and chocolate chips. Great. Now it's, okay, cool. The wearable, the thing that you've got on you knows what you're eating daily. It's checking it against the brand new prescription you got. It can flag you. And you can then call your doctor or do whatever you got to do and be like, hey, um, I got a war- potential interaction because I eat yogurt every day. Should I be concerned? And the doctor can say, oh, wow, I didn't know you were eating yogurt every day. Yeah, definitely. You know, we're going to want to change that up. Let's make it carrot juice or some shit. Let's do this. That way we eliminate that dairy interaction because you have to take this pill in the morning to make sure that your heart is regulated during the day. I don't know. I'm making this stuff up as I go, people. I didn't get a medical degree. Man, could that be cool though if I had a medical degree and I was a content creator? I could be one of those famous YouTube doctors. Great. Get paid twice. Anyways. So I think that's pretty cool. I think that this is this is going to be interesting. Uh I think this is is representing a good step forward. It's also nice that it's not and I'm I'm going to use the term not as praise but just as a narration. I think it's cool that a huge multinational corporation is embracing this again. They're stepping forward with a new piece of technology. Um, while independent companies are great, there's different levels of, of play and scalability, uh, you know, public awareness. There, there's a whole lot of things where indies do great at it. There's a whole lot of things where big multinational conglomerates do great at it. And we need to see the industry as a whole moving forward because that also subconsciously and sometimes very consciously It tells society, this is where we're going. This is the train that you're not stopping, is we are going in this direction. Now, if there's no interest in it, great, but there is interest. There is a ton of interest because our health sucks. So this is a good thing. I'm optimistic about it. I'm happy about it. I think we've got some cool stuff coming. So that is going to do it for episode 28 of the Papa Jug podcast. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, Don't forget that uh, if you've got a friend who prefers audio podcasts to video podcasts, uh, they can download this on Spotify, iTunes, uh, iHeart, TuneIn, uh, CastBox. Uh, I'm listing everything I can remember off the top of my head. So we are pretty much everywhere. And don't forget, Google Podcasts is gone or going away at least. Um, It is basically gone and that's that's going to be folded into YouTube Music but I'm already on YouTube. So whatever. Anyways, um, go have yourself a good morning, a good day, a good night. And I will say you, I will say you, I will see. I've only been saying this for two years. Uh, I will see you next Monday on Twitch. See ya.